on average, working for the same employer for more than two years will cause you to earn less of your lifetime as much as 50%, but sometimes more. This was reported by a Forbes article, as you can see here. CNBC released an article talking about how a 34-year-old increased her salary by $194,000 after job hopping only six times. There is no doubt if you want to make the big bucks in IT, you're going to have to move around. But there is risk involved with this if done incorrectly. So in today's video, we have Caleb McMurtry back with us for part three of this series. And we are talking about what you need to look out for before making a job switch. All that and more after this. Over, over the course of like 20 years, like employees that didn't jump employers lost like 50% of the total pay that employee, then employees that did jump like once every two years, which is kind of interesting. Not, you know, a short amount of time, like you've had so much success in this position. So, you know, it's really all about just finding the position that's like right for you, but yeah and, and and even more so not the position but the organization because no two organizations are alike um and there are the few diamonds in the rough um you know that the organizations that pay a, a, a above average salary or a decent salary and treat their employers good um and sometimes you got to weigh that when you're making your decision like yeah i could make a little bit more money but am i am i going to be happy at that organization or are they going to work work my tail off and i'm going to be miserable you know that's that's all things you got to think of when you're deciding are you going to jump employers um but like i said unfortunately i think the the more common scenario is you're going to have to job hop to to make the, make the larger incomes yeah what on, on, the, on the like good organization right like how do you how, how do you evaluate while you're interviewing whether or not an organization has like a good culture and like the manager that you'd be working under is somebody that would be supporting you? Um, you know, it's just kind of, I, I kind of read their personality and it's difficult when you're interviewing um, because you're, you're, you're getting like a split second look into that company. And if you, you know, if you blink, you might miss an important note, uh, but just kind of how they conduct themselves. Are they professional? Are they, do they talk like they're, expect the world out of you and you got to work hard or do they listen to your opinion you bring to the table um i i really value that my company values my opinion they they really no matter even if it's the dumbest idea i come up with they'll still sit down and listen to it and uh you know and they'll be they'll give me honest feedback as well um uh, you know and you you just i don't know if i have a good answer on how to to judge that i mean what's your thoughts on that uh how do can you tell during like the interview process if that if that company culture is going to be a good fit for you yeah you know it's so hard because it's the, the interview phase it's like i, I want to say it's kind of like dating but it's like you know you're both putting your best foot forward and then like, uh, as opposed to like, you know, marriage where you're like, you're just together 24 seven. And then it's like all like the rose colored glasses are off. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. you are a human being, you know? <laughs> and, and so like, I, I think one of the things that like, speaking of being married, my wife like helped me with, with like, you know, the interview process, right? And, and, and trying to do those kinds of assessments was, was hitting people up on LinkedIn. And, and kind of asking their, you know, their opinions and their stories. And sometimes, you know, sometimes people won't respond, but sometimes if they do, you'll get some pretty interesting feedback. Um, I've, I've dodged a couple bullets doing that, uh, you know, where some people, you know, and maybe it was just, you know, I, I reached out to the wrong person, but, you know, they definitely gave some feedback that I was like, okay, well, maybe this isn't the right time or the right time of the right yeah. organization for me to be applying to right now. Um, yeah. And, and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's it, in the interview process, it's blink and you miss it. So definitely like taking notes while you're, while you're interviewing and really, you know, it's re remembering that they're not only interviewing you, you're interviewing them. It's, it's a mutual yeah. agreement for, for you to be there. So yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that that kind of gets overlooked when you're just starting out in the field, but as you start getting into those better and better positions, 
as you job hop, it's a bigger and bigger risk you're taking. Um, you know, so that's one good thing to consider. And actually I was fortunate enough, my very first job, I reached out to the hiring manager. Um, and, um, oh, was that, it was my, my boss, you know, that would have been at the time and, uh, reached out to him and he actually invited me out to, for a beer to kind of unformally like, Hey, just to let you know, we, there is this one person that's a little over the top and is not a good mesh with everyone type of thing. And I want to see how you think about that. And I, that, I, that was super amazing. I thought actually, and you know, I, I, I told them all, well, every organization has one, you know, and thank you for letting me know, but I think I can handle myself <laughs> and it ended up being just fine. But, um, you know, the, it, it opens the opportunity to that. And I'm not saying, you know, reach out to the hiring person and ask it to buy him a beer. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, just strike up that conversation. Like you're saying, um, you can get some very useful insight and, you know, sometimes depending on who you talk to, you might find out that who, man, they, you know, like five people are on the way out the door and that's why the position opened. You know, the, something's happened in the organization and everything's going South. So that's, that's yeah. a great point. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something, you know, to really think of when you're trying to advance your career. No, 100%. And I think you made a really good point on people leaving. Like high, high turnover rates, definitely a, a key indicator for for really more the organization as a whole. But it could be, I mean, if it is like a specific role on a team, you know, maybe there is maybe there is something to that. Um, so I think that that's a, a pretty good indicator to, to key in on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but also, again, take it with a grain of salt because – maybe all those people they yeah. hired weren't the quite the right people. And, um, you know, there was like in my position, I am now, there was a decent amount of turnover when I entered. Um, and my boss had re some, I could tell he had some reservations about letting too loose on the reins and just letting me run with things because previous people screwed things up. You know what I mean? He right. had lost yeah. trust. Um, but over a year I gained that trust and found out that he's one of the best bosses I had. I've been very fortunate. Um, in two of my longest jobs I've had, I've had some of the best management, um, which really goes a long way. I will take a pay cut to have a boss that always has my back and stands behind me all the time, uh, versus making maybe an extra 10 grand, but being miserable and having someone that's constantly trying to replace me, um, at the end of the day. Yeah, one thousand percent. And I've I've looked out, you know, myself with 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 bosses and supervisors. I, I feel like I've had some really excellent, you know, bosses so far. Um, I, I've seen some seen some folks that wasn't the same story, and they were making pretty good coin, but yeah, their lives were miserable. They were getting worked to death, and their bosses were very very bad to them. So, yeah, that's Absolutely. not necessarily to say all like high paying jobs are terrible, but. Yeah, the, the boss is a very, very critical part of the equation. Yeah. One, one thing you kind of also have to look into, and um, it varies, and especially if you're going into like a, maybe a, like a penetration testing, if that's your desire. Um, one thing you have to factor in is the amount of travel a job might have. Um, I learned that out kind of the hard way uh, with my first job. Up front, they told me there's um, some travel was involved. And they told me like 10, 20%. Uh, travel, which was, was, was nothing at the time, which ended up being way more. But, um, if you have a family, you know, um, you know, a spouse or even more so kids or something like that, travel can really wear you down. Um, you know, by the time I left my very first job, uh, there was times I was gone on the road, like three months straight, only home on the weekends. Um, and that, that can really take a toll um, and I, I was burnt out. I, um, I was considering leaving tech, uh, just because I just hated being on the road. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Some people love being on the road, um, all the time. Um, but you know, like I had three young kids at home, um, and I was missing spending time with them, missing them, you know, walking and stuff like that. Um, and I was just miserable. So just another thing to consider when you are going out there and applying, you know, and looking at jobs. Yeah, 100%. So, um, you want to, do you mind talking a little bit? Um, you know, I've, I watched actually a video on your channel, but um, I kind of want to hear your story on what really inspired you to move into cybersecurity. Yeah, you know, it, 
it, it's kind of always been around me, I guess. Like uh, my, my dad's a college professor and he actually teaches cybersecurity. So he got me familiar with it, but he also kind of like, you know, kept it, like I, I'd ask some questions and then he'd, he'd, he'd point me in the right direction. So I'd really have to like go figure it out for myself. Um, that sounds bad, but it just kind of like got me on, like it, it taught me how to teach myself things, right? Um, and, and so I just kind of liked that, <laughs> this sounds weird. I like the cat and mouse game of like offense versus defense. Uh, it's something like, it's, it, it's, I enjoy football because like offense does something, then defense like shifts and then offense shifts back and it's kind of fun. And then it's similar with like cybersecurity, you know, it's kind of like this, this back and forth where an exploit comes out, defense shifts, you know, offense, you know, counteracts and it's, you know, like game theory. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty intriguing to me. Um, and then it's like, you know, kind of technical. So you really have to like, you know, think it's not necessarily, you know, something you can kind of like fall asleep at the wheel doing. Um, so the challenge is pretty enjoyable. Uh, hacking is cool. You know, who doesn't, who doesn't like a little bit of hacking, <laughs> but yeah. And the need is, the need is pretty real. Uh, you know, a lot of folks, I mean, well, everybody needs cybersecurity, but you know, the, the need out there is never going to go away. Everyone's, you know, they're always going to need it. So it's, you know, wherever you're working, you know, you're, you're ultimately helping people. And I think that's pretty good. Absolutely. Um, I know this varies from job to job, but uh, a lot of people are interested in, in like cybersecurity because they think it's a high paced, you know, fast paced, high adrenaline position. Um, what has your experience been in the field? You know, I think it really depends. You know, it's it's also dependent, and I hate to keep saying that because it's it's going to sound like no, a cliche or a cop out, but I do feel like it it really is highly dependent um, for uh, you know orgs that like have have a small team. You're probably going to be pretty busy. You know, everyone's plate's probably going to be pretty full all the time. Um, if you're on a bigger team you know, maybe they can distribute the workload a little bit and you'll have some, you know, it's not going to be crazy. Um, you're not going to be losing your mind. There's going to be like, you know, high tide and low tide. There's going to be some, some times where there's just not a lot going on and not necessarily chill out. That's probably the, the time to be the most vigilant because <laughs> if there's nothing going on, there's really something going on. You haven't figured it out yet. Um, but then there's the, you know, crazy busy season where, where a lot of things are popping off and, then it can actually be kind of, you know, you know, pretty, pretty rapid. So it's, it's so varied. Um, and that's kind of one of the fun things about it is, you know, it, things can happen at any time. Like remember like log four J coming out, uh, that just kind of seemingly happened out of nowhere. And there's, you know, we're still, it's still a thing <laughs> that exists out I'm, there. So. I'm so thankful I sidestepped that one. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, it, I, I saw it and I just remember hearing it. I'm like, crap, this is this like affects everything. Like, yeah. um, and and luckily, um, we we were in a good s position for that and didn't really have to deal with that. So that's good. That's good. I, I mean, I figured just hey, unplug Java. Like, just don't use Java. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly way, way easier said than done but just don't use java it's fine yeah so much <laughs> stuff even though you know it, you know end of life has happened and come and gone you know it's just yeah absolutely yeah. but uh so you know earlier we we're talking about you know constantly learning in the cybersecurity field or really any job in it you have to constantly be learning because things are constantly changing i think even more so in cybersecurity because you find new threats and new vulnerabilities every day how do you find yourself keeping up to to speed with the ever-changing environment yeah i you know what this is kind of one of those things where it's like social media can be a pretty good aid um I like recommend to people that it's like, it can be like the best, it can be your best friend, but it can also be your worst enemy. It's entirely dependent on how you manage it. And so like, I'll kind of re like rely on Twitter. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of excellent cybersecurity folks on there. Um, and other like, you know, IT and tech folks that are, that are talking about all kinds of cool stuff. And they will share some really excellent insights. They'll share some of the research they're working on. Like, and I, 
I think Log4j is like, you know, kind of tying that back to that. Like one of those excellent examples, like whenever a big vulnerability happens or a massive breach happens, like people, people talk about it and they'll share their thoughts. They'll dig into it and kind of publish a little bit of their research. And you can really learn a lot just by scrolling the Twitter feed. And, uh, you know, I say manage it right because, you know, if you're following a lot of the wrong folks or, you know, you're, you're not necessarily managing the feed quite effectively, then it can easily become quite distracting um, or, you know, can really impact the mental health in a way that's not that great. But, yeah, you know, as long as you're, you're, you're keeping it, you know, kind of in line, it, it's a huge help. It is a very, very excellent resource. Yeah, I, I, I find myself personally tuning in um, a lot to like Security Weekly's podcasts, um, yeah. sometimes even turning into like Threat Wires as well uh, by Hack5. Um, that's where I, t- I tend to tune in the most time because I'll, it's something I can turn in, t- turn on on my way into work, kind of start getting myself into that mindset, just kind of passively listen. You know, something will happen, I'll be like, oh, crap, I should look at that, you know, type of yeah. thing. Uh, but yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, question for you. So in like the networking world, we, a lot of times will build our own home labs and, you know, set up switches, routers and stuff and try to practice on different configurations, break it, build it a different way. Is there really a, a home lab you can build in cybersecurity? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, really doing a lot of the same stuff, like building a network and then breaking it and, you know, building it again, um, building like an active directory, you know, trying to hack it, uh, download, like there's a, you know, Vulnhub or some of the other ones, like hack the box is a great one, uh, where you can like download a, a vulnerable image or a, a vulnerable, uh, VM and go after that. Like so many things you can do with a home lab. It, that's one of the best ways to kind of learn and practice on your own is have your own personal environment to, you know, fire off a bunch of exploits and learn how to use a bunch of tools and stuff like that against something that is designed to be blown up, (laughs) you know, hacked in a lot of different ways. What an amazing talk. Now, the thing is, even after we covered all that great advice in today's video, there's still more to consider if you want to make over six figures quickly in the IT field. So if you want more information on how to quickly climb the career ladder and start making real money, make sure you check out this next video that will help set yourself up for success when making those changes. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy.